In this session, we're going to take a look at the Repository Explorer, which is one of the most important tools for you as a developer, because there you find the entire data model described and also all the data types and all the objects and even like all the fields as objects. So you get out a lot of documentation, how to do certain codings for certain standard objects. So it's really an important place to look up things if you don't know what that things mean and also a place to get a certain understanding and to help you to relate actually the UIs to the object model. So let's take a look at this repository explorer and I will show you around a little bit there. The repository explorer is one of the most useful tools when I do my development. I can open the repository explorer by going here to view repository explorer. And here I find all the objects that are released for development. So I find really most of the sales and service cloud objects here and also a vast documentation of them, development orientated. So for example, if I click the customer here, you will see a description of the customer object. You will see in which namespace you find it, um, that you need something for imports. We have used this in my earlier tutorials. You find a short definition of it and also some description of it. So that the different roles like prospect and customer. And um, there are also examples, for example, how to create a new customer record in the system. So there is a sample upsell coding that has the most important statements in order to create via the business logic a new customer. Um, so this really is a good starting point if you need to do something to check if there's something in the repository explorer about it. Um, there are also retrieve examples. How can you retrieve a customer? How can you query a customer and uh, more? Okay. But what is there more? If you take a look now here and open one of the objects, you get all the fields available in this object. So you really get all the information here uh, that you need. So you see all the actions that can be reused with them to activate or the block action or touch, for example. There are certain actions and they have also a documentation, sometimes a bit more vast, sometimes a little bit less. For example, with activate, you can change the lifecycle status code. Um, that's the only way to change like a customer status code. So you also have a lot of fields here, like let's say a category code. And for the codes, it's very important. I mean, if you want to know what's behind a code, like the category code, the easiest is to copy and paste the code here and now go to our data types because besides the objects, we also find the data types here. And then we can look up uh, the data types. So we can look up, for example, the category code here and see what's in there. Here is not too much because it's just a string, but let's go back here, sorry. Um, oh, where's my customer? Again, category code. So I should have not taken the name of it, but I should have taken the data type, the business partner category code. Now let's look up this one. Okay, and now we find really this code and also we find the list. So it can be either a person or an organization. And that's very important because you find always all the possible values for code lists from the system really. So even if you change it in the fine tuning, you see here the uh, current list. So let's take a look what we else have here. Um, let's go back to our customer, open it and let's see what else we have here. Internal ID, so that's the idea of the customer. So really have all the data model described. You can also see which queries you have that you can use. And then you can also go into the details. And I mean, that's now for sure for a beginner, a little bit confusing, but by time you really know where the information is. For example, in current common, you find things like the business partner formatted name, you find like address information here, organization information. Um, then you have things like um, employee responsible, which is the person, the employee ID that is responsible for the account, the account owner on the UI. Um, a good way to understanding the um, model is also to open a standard UI and check where the bindings are. I mean, you have seen the previous tutorials, hopefully, where I went also through the UI designer. And um, it's very helpful sometimes to take a look at the UIs and see what is the related element in the model. Yeah, but again, very important is that you can look up the data types. So for example, if you develop something, 
if you remember, we developed our seminar management here. And I use certain data types here. For example, I'll use the language independent long text here. So let me now look this up, uh, what this one is about. So and then you can find that's an 80 character text here. Okay, and it's language independent. So there are these descriptions. Let's take a look else what we used. We used, for example, an amount. Okay, there are several amounts in different namespaces. We we'll use now this one here. And then you see the amount consists of a content and a currency code, basically. And there's also an example, basically. So there's a currency code. That's the amount, basically, here. And it's really a definition of all the data types here. So let's take a look what else could be interesting. Date, maybe. Um, you use the type code indicator, OK. But you see, um, you really can find the division of any data type in here. And you can easily search it. You can really find anything. For example, a group code is something we need sometimes. Oh, I hope it is group code. No, it is different. Let me put this star group code. So their activity group code, for example, this specifies what type of activity it is, if it's a customer visit, a telephone call, a business letter. So you find really these codes that you need sometimes when you're programming, you really find all the definitions here. So that's very important. And again, it's very important to look up the objects, but also it's important to know whether you have right access or not because some elements you don't have write access. So for example, here you see this is released, so we can use it for our programming, and you have write access, so you can create new customers because there are certain objects or fields where you don't have write access. We see this also when we look into the customer. It's important, this little lock you can see, this little symbol here. For example, here, in the act as organizational center indicator, we don't have write access. So this only the system can write. I mean, that's for a reason, because there's certain standard logic on that field that needs to work in a certain way and you should not be able to influence it but other things for example you can write but for example we see also here the life cycle status code of a customer that's typical in sap can also never written down directly to the data i mean you always need to go via the action activate block to set this basically so you can influence the status but only via a standard logic to reuse it so there are also some where you think you might not write into it, but sometimes you just need to go to the next level. So you can see here, uh, here it's, it's all okay. They always have write access. Sometimes you need to go to the node that you go to, to the content node. So even below a node, you always need to check the last node if you can write into it. Okay, so never stop here at the beginning. All oh, this locked, I can do it. You always need to go really to the last plus here. Yeah, let me see. I mean, generally, you also see, for example, for example, what uh, relation you have. That's uh, zero to one. This is a zero to many uh, relationship. So usually, we should try to use the zero to one. It's easier. For example, current common, we should always use that because there's also a common node. But that's only a theoretical case that you have multiple commons. Normally, you only have one, and you should use a current common. Um, yeah, besides that, let me see. I mean, here you can also see, again, the different nodes, like the common ones. So you have both associations here as well as nodes. So the nodes is more the data structure. Association is more like a quick link to get there. Um, it takes a little bit of time to understand all the different elements here. But the most important are, again, the actions, the fields, and then the queries. What's very important, you can also execute this query. So for example, if you take this query here, you can do a right click and say execute query. And if I do that, then I would query now all customer records in the system. So you see, I have 1,811 customers. And if I enter here customer number, I'm not sure if I know no one by heart. Yeah, that's one entry. Then you can also open this customer record. And now I can see really the data of this customer, okay? And now I can go also through this structure here through navigate by association. So I can say, hey, I would like to look now into, is it common or current common? Let's look into common. So now it will open up common. And here we see the business partner formatted name, Porter LLC. Um, is there anything else? Not so much. Let's see if we can go further down. Uh, it's only the name here. So let's go back to root. And that's how we navigate to the data. So now we're again at the customer level. Let's see if there's an address maybe. 
um, address information. Then I have here the address. Then I go to the address snapshot, which is part of the address. I need to go further down. So I go to the display address maybe. Ah, here it's only port LC. Let's go one level back. So you can really navigate through the data here. So I think he doesn't have, unfortunately, a postal address here written in anything. Yeah, download has here, St. Paul, US. So you can really navigate through the data, okay? I mean, that's very important that you do that. You can also even generate code. I mean, if you do a certain query, you can generate your query code. So here's the query code now to query the customer 1001. So I think that's important feature here within, that's hidden within the Repository Explorer that is helping everybody to understand a little bit better the data and try out already some queries here. Okay, um, what else? So again, the business objects and all the models, all the fields you have accessible here and some documentation on any kind of level here. So you really find everywhere some documentation here. And then we have the data types. So here you find all data types, can look them up, the definition of the data types, okay, and what they're meant for and how they're being used. And then there is another tab here, the enhancement options. So here you find, we call them SAP in the past bodies. So they are special programming exits where you can influence a very specific part of a standard logic. Okay, so there are certain things, for example, customer quote output, where you can influence in a certain way the quote output. Um, here it's always important to look up some documentation. So there is really important to refer to the documentation because each one of these uh, enhancement options is a little bit different. So for example, there's also an enhancement option to control how integration is sending out, like what customers are sent out, for example. There's many for the utilities industry that are very specific. So that's actually quite the most for the utilities here. Um, and you have many more. I cannot talk about each one of them because I also need to look up what they are for. But just to know there's a lot of enhancement options that bring you a lot of individualization options in addition to the normal ones uh, to influence logic and uh, can help you sometimes to get around very tricky situations. Then there's also the inbound service interface where you can list all the standard web services. We tend to use the OData services much more because these are all the SOAP based web services basically. So there's a lot of query and manage uh, web services, but uh, in current times you often tend to use OData services, which you can also see in the front end in the OData service explorer. And uh, then there's a certain amount of reuse UIs, like embedded component, like a document list. So if you did my attachment uh, tutorial, you would see that there is uh, this attachment uh, viewer here, attachment list, basically. Um, they are not all documented. I don't use them so often, basically. I mean, for most, it's a place that I use the least basically here. So the most important again is the business objects here and the data types because that's kind of your daily tool set to understand a bit better how certain things in the standard structures work and how the data is uh, put together. Okay, so that's mostly what I have to tell about the repository explorer here and um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and you learned a little bit. And if you didn't know it, I mean, really check it out and uh, look a bit in the detail because here you really get a lot of valuable information if you need to interact with standard a bit more. Okay, goodbye.